What a great way to start off Halloween month, right? Hey everyone, Kyle once again. And welcome back to the, the next movie review. And now that we uh, the first one of Halloween, October, Halloween month. So, go away, great way to start 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 this month, this scary month off, you know. Yeah, I'm yeah I'm scared by this film, you know. I'm so yeah, it's, it's it makes me so scared that I just want to go and take a dump because after after crap in my pants because watching this torture of a movie. Yeah. Or maybe better yet, it just I makes I want to go and hide, play hide the soul, and go seek it somewhere else. Hide, seek, yeah, there you go. There's the title right there. Yeah, so yeah, I know I'm making bad jokes here because you know what, this movie is bad anyway. So why not make a bad make bad jokes? You know, that's why sometimes sometimes yeah I make some jokes up, but sometimes I'm bad at telling jokes, but. It's fitting for this film because this film is shit. Because this is film, okay. Hide and Seek from 2005. Yeah, that's why I was making a joke. That was making a joke. Hide the soul and seek it out later. Yeah, hide and seek. Yeah, but as I was saying, it came out in 2005. Stars Robert De Niro and Dakota Fanning. And thing is, though, <clears throat> you know, it's why is this why do I why do I like this film? Because this because I saw this back then a couple times from back then, like a couple times after when it like, maybe or a year or two after when it came out. Right, I saw this a couple of times, rewatched it. You know, it's just like oh my god, this is one of the most. I don't know why I thought this was good because this is this film. Is one of the most predictable, so predictable that I saw coming miles and miles away. Like I knew the whole film before it even got started. Oh my okay, maybe that's going to maybe that's going a bit though. But I already knew. I pretty much know the whole pretty much the whole movie, but pretty much like five minutes after it started. Because like I said, it was so everything was so predictable because you had such on the nose. Or obvious on the nose red herrings, <clears throat> and just whatever clues has been given, you already knew what was what was going on. Now, thing is though, okay, it's not Robert. De it's not Robert De Niro's fault. He's a great Robert De Niro, great actor. You know, he and which I gotta say, sp I, if anyone has to see the film, okay, I'll get. I'll be fair. Sp if anyone's okay, spoiler alerts. Wow. Well, okay. When I put my hand down, that's what spoil. When I put this down, spoils. Okay. So when I'm okay. Oh no. But when I'm holding this up right now, this is spoilers. Okay. By the time I put this down, end of spoils. Okay. But to anyone who hasn't seen the film, okay, stop right now and watch. But much, I think you can figure it figure it out for yourself anyway when you do watch it. But still, okay. Spoilers. Dakota Fanning has an imaginary friend named Charlie. And spoilers, Robert De Niro, he's Charlie. You know, as I did not see that coming a mile away. First of all, casting him is is the first thing. Because we've seen Robert De Niro play a bad guy or a psycho a couple times before. Whether you think it's in Taxi Driver or better yet in Cape Fear. Or um, he was a bad guy in Heat. Or in Godsend, I was like, pff, nothing. But... We see he plays a bad guy before. Casting him, especially when he plays a psycho, that's number that's red flag number one. And yeah, and it, like everything that's you know everything that everything that leads up to all the clues, whatever you know, it was so predictable. I already knew that Robert De Niro, he's Charlie, the the so-called imaginary friend by Dakota Fanning. I mean, every, as I'm watching this, I'm looking as whether well, all this was like clues or whatever, or the obvious red on the nose red herrings. It's so on the nose. You already knew what was what was going on, but you're just sitting there watching, 
okay, it's like I know what this is happening. I, I can see that I can see this coming. You know, just get to this gets to the obvious twist already. So yeah, that was that. Uh, I put this down because so that's, that's spoilers. Because that's just, that's the thing. It's Robert De Niro, okay? Because okay, getting back to the beginning. Robert De Niro, he's like this famous psychiatrist or therapist, whatever you want to call it. He has a daughter played by Dakota Fanning, and Dakota Fanning, she's a great child. Act she's a great child actor, you know. And this, and this, this came out two thousand five. And later in the same year, she go and star in Steven Spielberg's remake of War of the Worlds. I enjoy War of the Worlds. <clears throat> she did a great job in that film. She's a talented. She was a talented child actress. I enjoy her in Tony Scott's Man of Fire with Denzel Washington, which later, which later, um, like uh, uh, last month, really enough, last month, she just start, she teamed up with um, Denzel Washington again in the third Equalizer film. <clears throat> okay, you know, teaming with Denzel Washington since Man of Fire. Okay, but um, then she was good in Sam I Am, you know, which was back when she was a much younger girl with uh, Sean Penn and Michelle Pfeiffer. Um, S M I M War of the Worlds. This film, Man on Fire, and um, probably I forgot what some of the films. Maybe she did in between though. But um, she's a talented young uh, child actress. So it's not it's not it's not her fault. She's given the best. She was given the best what she did performance wise or script wise. You know. She was given the best she did. She she it's her her acting is not, is not the problem. She was just given what she do did script wise in this case shitty script. And also is um, Albert Hughes um, of the one of the director the director the directing brothers Albert Hughes. <clears throat> Originally he was going to direct this, but he left due to creative differences. So they got this guy, this director. I think it was the director of Swin Fan, uh, John Polson. So they got him instead, which I don't think I wasn't. I remember I haven't seen Swim Fan in a long time. I don't think I remember it being that big on it though. But this guy is just is easily the worst this guy's done. I don't know what else he did before or after Swim Fan or whatever after this movie. I don't know what else. But um, but Albert Hughes, I think he would have been much better because I think yeah, Albert Hughes, I think he helped uh, direct um, Dead Presidents, and I think he directed another. Oh, I gotta see now. Yeah, Dead Presidents, which um, he also did from Hell. Yeah, well, that was the film with Jack the Ripper with Johnny Depp, and the book, uh, the Book of Eli, also with Denzel Washington. Uh, I think I remember now liking uh, from Hell though, but although I just like the idea of a film about Jack the Ripper, which I just did talk about Jack the Ripper in um, in uh, Undead Girl Murder Farce. I think I remember not being on that film, but I was liking the idea because hey, it's Jack the Ripper. <laughs> even I would probably say even from Hell, if if I was not a fan of it, if I rewatched it again though, I'll still say it's much better than this film. Or I think I wasn't big on Book of Eli either, although I like Denzel Washington. But still, those films from Robert Hughes, uh, Albert Hughes, sorry, um, were either Dead Presidents, Book of Eli, or um, From Hell, or much better, much better movies than this. I mean, at least, at least, yeah, from hell, I mean, it looked more suspenseful than this movie. It didn't seem that predictable like this movie. Due to creative differences, and they got this guy, the director of Swim Fan, to do this movie. And it was like, and and so, Robert De Niro, anyway, decided, since his, his wife died, <clears throat> his wife died, so he decided to take his, um, he has a, there's a, a friend of the family's, uh, another doctor, played by Famke Johnson, from who played Jean Grey from the X-Men movies, especially the first three. And of course, as I said time and time again about this film right here, Deep Rising, which I love to death, one of the most criminally underrated uh, creature feature movies ever made. I always defend Deep Rising. She, I really liked her in that movie. Fonka Johnson, also from GoldenEye, among other movies. Um, she did the best she can in this movie as well. So I don't really blame her. It's this a shitty script. So did Robert De Niro take his daughter out to this like um, house in the middle of nowhere? Which that also thing is oh that's 
another thing. Oh yeah, take your traumatized daughter and I'll sit to, to the middle of nowhere trying to help her. And and then since then we're becoming there that's when she started making this imaginary friend named Charlie. And they were also trying to have like like obvious on the nose red herrings like with this guy um, who tries to like let the keys to the house like which for some reason he shows up in two of them wanting to leave the keys. And it's like, why leave the keys? I'm like, I was going to leave it on your door, st on your uh, mat, uh, floor mat, but leave the keys that uh, that early in the morning. <clears throat> and then you have um, this other couple, this neighbor. Um, the husband is played by Robert John Burke, which he was Robocop in, the, in Robocop 3. Yeah, Robert John Burke from the third Robocop movie. He was Robocop. And he was also with Stephen King's Thinner as well. And they try to make it so like like a, a such a red herring thinking like trying to make it make it creepy and like even with Dakota Fanning's behavior as well, trying to make it seem like all the stuff that she's doing, like with the um like the bathtub and the writing of the wall writings of the wall and all that stuff, they probably make it that she's doing this creepy stuff, you know? Oh, it's it's Charlie. So And even even like like Funker Johnson's kinda like Bring her, why don't you bring her back to the city and keep her in the institution? But Robert Jones like, well, I'm gonna she's gonna keep her for keep her here for two more weeks. I'm like, you she won't even she won't survive two more. She probably won't survive one week. I mean, she's already started. Th you think she's already started acting batshit? You think she's already starting to act batshit crazy? Like the day you moved to the house, so two more weeks. <laughs> and so and she's making all these drawings and. Oh, there's a dead cat in the bathtub. And then all of a sudden, also Robert De Niro, she's, he started having these flashbacks, you know. I'm like, you want to talk about predictability? All of a sudden, he's, they're in the middle of nowhere. Starts Everything starts acting crazy when uh, Dakota Fanning first gets into the house. He starts all of a sudden having these flashbacks. Oh, he sees these cartons that you think he pee, when uh, the, the stuff he's packed up in the cards, they think they're, st they're still not unpacked. I wonder where all this is going. And also, oh, Elizabeth Shue, how about my friend, another uh, neighbor, name, uh, another neighbor, played by Elizabeth Shue, wasted in this, wasted in this film from, from Hollow Man, of course, Misadventures in Babysitting, which I enjoyed, Hollow Man, I said, um, Piranha 3D, of course, and then, uh, oh, Back to the Future Part uh, 2 and 3, and um, The Karate Kid, <clears throat> yeah, The Karate Kid. Wasted in this film, and may have started taking a liking into into Robert De Niro. Oh, and but then uh, of course, when um, oh when the when Charlie's playing when because she plays hide Dakota Fan she plays hide and seek with Charlie. They like to play hide and seek, and of course when when um, Elizabeth Shue um, goes into her room and oh Charlie's in um, in the closet. Then we see from the a point of view of a camera going towards the shoe, and she falls out the window. So, and she dies. And then, like, did Robert De Niro is like getting skeptical on this, and then suspe suspecting the neighbor is doing this, accusing the neighbor, and just. And also, oh, and the cop, there's like the, the sheriff, you know, is played by Dylan Baker. Dylan Baker, you might remember from from the Sam Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy, he was Professor Connors, which sadly he didn't get turned into the lizard in that in that trilogy though. But he played Doctor Connors. He's been all among other films as well. But um, oh yeah, he was in Tree. Yeah, I forgot he was in Trick or Treat. I always remember him in in the Michael Dower the Michael Dowry um horror Halloween anthology film Trick or Treat. He was um the print the principal the help. Uh, Killed that kid with the chocolates, and then he ended up getting killed later on by Anna Paquin in the in the werewolf scene. Yeah, Dylan Baker from that from Trick or Treat in the Sam Raimi Sam Raimi Spider Man trilogy from as Doctor Connors. He plays a sheriff in this. Dakota Fanning is drawing a picture of him getting uh, dead. He's like, "What are you drawing? Oh, it's you." And then downstairs, he walks into the uh, another closet downstairs. He gets whacked in the head with a shovel. And it's like I said, it's like everything was so predictable because even with the fl even all the flashbacks was making it so obvious that it was Robert Jr. the whole entire time. He's Charlie because 
Charlie began because since he's a psychiatrist, he had this video recording. Probably, he probably suppressed all the stuff and probably hypnotized them. Whatever, if Charlie wanted to come out and play, whatever with Dakota Fanning. But all it started because in the beginning, you know, he was in a suit, right? Because he was like at, uh, at a party, right? And he's on the ground floor, right? And he notices like several floors up up the stairs. He sees his wife cheating on him. She was cheating on him, and that's basically when he snapped basically he snapped and became the split personality of him charlie he killed his wife along with i think i think i think he killed the, the the lover as well i don't remember but i don't tend to though but i know he killed his wife i think he killed the lover the lover as well um and that's when um all the stuff that started the like, flashes like um with the whole everything he's everything that charlie did was him and try to make it obvious that Dakota Fanning make it seem like that she was going crazy, but it was him the whole entire time. And we see the and how for the point of view shot when uh, the camera was going towards Lily Shue when when she fell out the window, it was it showed the reveal that it was Robert De Niro that who did it, yeah. And <clears throat> when he saw all, all the all the photos and the stuff like that, then that's when he starts remembering. So. And that's when now, Char now Charlie has emerged now. We see him as Charlie with the knife and telling Dakota that, hey, let's play hide and seek. One, two, three. You know, I'm like, like I said, I knew all this was, I saw this coming five miles away, basically from the beginning of the freaking movie. I gotta stop saying, I gotta stop being nice, saying freaking fucking movie. There you go. I gotta stop being nice to myself, you know. If that, was, if that makes me this inferior, I gotta start being... Not being nice anymore. Fucking movie, yeah. Fuck this movie. There you go. It is, it is, it is a piece of shit movie anyway, yes. I don't know why I do that to myself. I just don't know why. Maybe because it's just a habit. I don't know. But anyway... So then Fonka Johnson gets there, and there's this whole thing with the cave, there's a cave, which that kind of plays in too late, you know, where it's like, <sighs> why do they bring this, bring this cave in all of a sudden? And then, this is what happens when you get, like, it comes with, not like with this ending, the one we see, we usually see the in, the theor in the theoretical version, right? But this comes, like, with four different endings, yeah. Four, di four different alternate endings right there. Why does this film have four alternate endings? I have absolutely no idea why. But I'm telling you the one we saw we got from the we saw in theaters. So Fonda Johnson gets there, and then she goes and shoots Robert De Niro. She shoots him, and then we get the later indicating when when uh, Fonda Johnson takes Dakota Fanning back to the city, and then she's now draw, making a drawing of herself that she has two heads. So now it indicates that she has now developed the same per type of personality that her father has. And now she's been, is she gonna be is she starting to become crazy too like him now? Which kind of makes it funny though. Charlie she knows that Charlie is her dad, right? She knows that it's her dad at the same time, it's the same person. Would you but I guess I don't know, maybe because making it's a plot. The plot is making us thinking that oh, so she knows it's her dad, but she doesn't want to say anything. Or maybe it's because it's maybe it's mess, messing her mind, whatever. Maybe that's why she doesn't want to say anything. Oh, Dad, hey, Charlie is you. Or maybe what? Maybe if well, maybe when you're back, if you're a little greedy, don't think about the stuff. Maybe you should start. Maybe maybe set up like a hidden video camera to record that you're the one who's doing this or whatever. I don't know. Maybe I'm just going too deep into this. Maybe. I'm just maybe already, maybe maybe that's a thought you don't think of you don't think of as a kid maybe I have no idea, but I'm like, if you knew this, if you knew your dad is your imaginary friend, why don't you tell him? Or, or probably it's gonna make it decay that um, he's gonna think that you're the one who's crazy. I don't know. Like I said, maybe I'm just putting too much thought into it. But yeah, but but the ending with that, you know, she's she has to make she's make a drawing of herself, and she has two heads, so she's basically gonna develop that same personality like he has, and now she's the, probably she's gonna next one. She's probably gonna be crazy now. I was, yeah, you know, 
Richard Rope Richard Roper 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 I always call him Roper which he um he uh, since uh, Gene Siskel died he helped uh you know co-host with Roger Ebert I don't know what he, I don't know what movie he sees in this because look back here Richard Roper he says he calls it a chilling roller coaster ride I don't know what version you saw what version of this movie you saw because I there was nothing chilling there was not it was not a roller coaster ride at all it was a boring snooze fest that was so freaking predictable that we saw it coming basically from the beginning of the freaking fucking movie there you go see there we go again I just can't it may, it's like it's like a it's like a um a defense mechanism basically I don't know why I just have no idea why. What what Roger were thinking? Oh, uh, not Roger Ebert. Richard Roper. Yeah, he says you'll be jumping, you'll be jumping out of your seat. Yeah. I'll go jump. Out, I won't go jump on my seat right now and throw this um thing in the garbage. It's it was it's so it was boring, not suspenseful, nothing chilling. Richard Roper. And it was so predictable. I think this is one of the most predictable movies I've seen. If I didn't make a list, a top ten list, I'll put this on there. Because we basically knew the whole movie before it got started. Well, like, okay, five minutes in. Okay, five minutes in, you knew the whole movie. There you go. How long was this on for? 101 minutes, so... Hour and ten... Hour and a half, ten minutes. Minus eight credits, but still, it was so boring with at such a slow pace. And it's like it's like it wanted me to just, hey pick it up. We knew that we know we know what's going on. Just get to it already. But like I said Robert. It's Robert. Is it, it's the actress's fault? No, it's not. Okay. It's not Robert De Niro's fault. Probably did this just it was a quick pay, it was an easy paycheck for him because hey he plays a psycho but from before here's an easy here's an easy acting job for you you can play another psycho. Dakota Fanning, she tried the best she can. Given what she was given to do script wise, Fonka Johnson same thing you know I like Fonka Johnson but she wasn't given much to do except at the end when she shoots Robert De Niro. Elizabeth Shue wasted. And such on the nose, red herrings like, hey, oh, maybe the, the, the trying to make the neighbors like creepy, you know, like maybe this has something to do with it, you know. But now we knew coming from, we knew from from the beginning, from the obvious, like from the obvious flashbacks. Oh, it's just him and no one else in the middle of nowhere with with his daughter. Um, all the stuff that he's all the stuff that he's seen and what's going on, everything we already knew what was happening. So, score by John Ottman, nothing score. What was so scary, scary, eerie, creepy about the score? He going to do better stuff though. Like I remember one, he did the score for House of Wax, like the year uh, before this came out. I like that score from House of Wax, much better movie than this. And this came out in January, which it, it was it did was it was number one at the box office. It did make some money. Even for a film that came out in January, so it was kind of a, uh, uh, maybe you could say a sleeper hit, whatever. It made over a hundred million, over a hundred million in, uh, worldwide. But it doesn't escape from the negative, from the very negative reviews and the critics. It has a twelve percent Rotten Tomatoes, which I think it deserves lower. I think it has a five point nine ninety B. To me, to me, that's too high. She deserves lower. So. And Dakota Fanning, she was going to do better work, you know. I mean, like I said, same year after she did, same year after she did this film, she going to star in War of the Worlds, much better movie. And why this film need, needs four different alternate endings? I have no idea why. What else? For also for features, you have an audio commentary with the director and screenwriter. I think I, it's more I put the blame on the on the screenwriter for this, Ari Schulzberg. I th I just put the I think a lot of the blame goes on the writer and the director. What if Al if Albert Hughes would have did something different? Who knows? But we'll never know though. So they're the they're the two ones to blame for this: the the writer of this film and the director. 
So yeah, that's why I think about it. I should I should just hide it somewhere and never seek it out again. <sighs> best best the best way you can describe describe this film at best predictable. So yeah, so that's my rant on on hide and seek. If like I said, I gave I already gave my spoilers so the people who have not seen this uh the, the people who have not seen this film I already gave my before my spoiler word, so if you haven't seen the film, uh go ahead and see it. I'm not gonna stop you, but I you're you're already, you're already gonna predictably gonna the people who have already seen this probably already know it's so predictable. But if you like the film, it's fine, but I won't get it though. But anyway, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. Which I will say probably it's a ton a lot better than this movie. But I'll dub, stay tuned for the next one. Later. Fuck this movie. And it's predictability.